Hello everyone, my name is David Breslow. Here I am in the upper right hand corner of the screen. I'm going to be here along with you and while you're looking at this intro video about Wired to Win, it's going to be a brief discussion about Wired to Win, which is the fastest path to peak golf. Here's the approach. There's no cycle babble. A lot of people over the years have complained about the psychology and all the repetitive things they hear all the time. I call it cycle babble. No cycle babble, no hype or no false promises. It's very direct, it's very honest, and it's very clear. It's very results focused, so you are going to see a shift in what you think, what you feel, and what you do starting from day one, session one. And it's all about in the moment change, okay? It's not about coming home later that day and opening up a journal and thinking back about what happened, which is what a lot of people do. I think that's too late. I want people to make shifts in the moment on the golf course right when things are happening. That's how you get stronger as a golfer. So there's two truths I always talk about. Number one, more information does not equal more change. Okay, so many golfers think that if they gather a whole bunch of information, and I think you know what I'm talking about, that that will be the catalyst for change. And the reality is it's not. I work with a lot of golfers who have a ton of information and still they're suffering from the same issues day after day, week after week, month after month, decade after decade even. Truth number two, nothing changes until you do. That's true because while you think the information is gonna be the catalyst for the change, it's not. When you change, when you the golfer begin to change, that's when your game starts to really soar. So those are two truths I always talk about. So let's take a look at this thing we call a mental game, okay? Not my favorite phrase, to be honest with you, but I use it because that's what's socially acceptable in today's world. So here's the question. What percentage of the game do you think is mental? Well, I hear numbers ranging from 10 to 75. 75 is the average. Some say 90, some say 95. As you see on the screen here, I'm telling you it's 100% and I'm going to prove it. Here's why. As I teach it now, here's the only caveat maybe, but as I teach it, these are the four elements that make up the mental game. Number one, the mind. Number two, the body. Number three, the emotions. And number four, the energy. So as these four things make up the mental game as I teach it, and I call these things your power tools. It's okay, so that's not the proof, here it is. Here's the proof, every time you put your hands on the golf club, Every time you put your hands on the golf club, all four of those elements are in play. Your mind, your body, your emotions, and your energy. There's no denying this. There's no argument about it. You can try to argue about it, but you won't win the argument. I don't know why you would want to bother trying. All four of these things are always in play every single time you put your hands on the golf club. That's why I say it's 100%. So here are five things I would like you to know about those power tools, okay? Number one, they influence everybody. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what your skill level is, in fact, that's point number two. It completely bypasses age, gender, personality type, and experience or skill level. Actually, any other factor you can think of is irrelevant because all these, these four elements are constantly impacting what you do. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter if you're a six handicap or a 16 handicap, doesn't matter if you're a type A, a male or a female, completely irrelevant. Also, what I talk about in terms of the program is I'm not teaching psychology, I'm teaching laws, which I will mention in a minute. These laws are very precise and they're very predictable. They're precise in how they produce results and they're predictable in how they do that as well. It's a pretty interesting conversation. The best part for a lot of people, they're provable. So nobody has to believe anything I have to say. Nobody has to trust some kind of psychological generic theory or anything like that or uh, a study of any kind it, which is not relevant to you maybe. These laws that I talk about are provable. That's one of the best features that a lot of people like. Here's another feature that a lot of people are surprised about. Your belief in the laws are not required for them to produce the outcomes that they're producing, and your opinion of them is completely irrelevant. Now, here's what I mean when I say that. Some people find that pretty interesting. Let me move my picture out of the way a little bit. I'm still here with you. Physics, that's a law, right? 
if you're taking lessons from a golf pro, they're teaching you the law of physics, which basically is saying that the, when the face of the golf club meets the golf ball, that golf ball has a very precise and predictable reaction, right? So if the face of your club is open, that ball is going to slice. If the face of your club is closed, that ball is going to hook. If the face of your club is flat on contact, that ball is going to go straight in the direction that your club was facing at the time. So if we're out on the golf course and you're slicing the ball all over creation and you don't really want to, you cannot turn to me and say, hey, Dave, that law doesn't work. I'm slicing the ball all over the place. I'm sorry. The laws always work. They always produce an outcome. You can't say the laws don't work ever. And this is why people get such fast results from this conversation. Here's a second law as an example. Everyone knows the law of gravity. Nobody argues that. So let's say we're up in an airplane and we're going to parachute and the door opens. We're the only two in the plane besides the pilot, of course. You walk over to the door and before you step out, you turn to me and you say, hey, Dave, I don't believe in gravity. Never have, <laughs> never will. I'm just going to look at you and smile and say, okay, great. And then you step out. What's going to happen? You know darn well what's going to happen. You're going down. Why? Because gravity is in play here. So here's the point. Physics or gravity, they don't care what you believe. They don't care what I believe. They don't care what our opinion is of them. They are producing an outcome. That's all they do is produce outcomes. That's what laws do. Laws produce outcomes and they're precise, they're predictable, and they're provable. That's why people love this conversation so much. So who am I? Who is it that you're even, that I'm even, uh, you're even listening to here? Well, here's me. Here's me. Um, 25 years I've been a performance coach for a number of athletes, the corporate world as well, and individual contributors as well. I'm the weekly contributor to the Golf Channel on their, uh, the mental game writer for the Golf Channel. I've been a guest on the Golf Channel. I've been the director of mental toughness at the USTA National Tennis Center as well. And I'm also the author of Wired to Win, The Mental Keys to Play Your Best Golf. So enough about me. Here's what I'd like you to consider. Stop fighting yourself. So many people I talk to over the years, so many golfers I talk to, are constantly fighting themselves without realizing it. I'm about to tell you in just a couple of minutes why you struggle so much. And this is true for all of us. You see the two circles on the screen. Circle one is your prison. Circle two is where your freedom is. Circle one represents everything you know up until now. All of your limiting factors, all your beliefs, all your fears, your self-doubts, your, all the proof, uh, your self-talk that's negative, all the stuff that's holding you back now exists in circle one. Now, the problem that we have is when we think we have a problem, we think the best idea is to go work on that problem, right? Let's say you need more confidence. So your logical mind says to you, okay, well, it makes sense. Let's go work on our confidence. So what do you do? You read a book, you go to a workshop, you look at some videos online, you do a whole bunch of things, but here's the issue. Take a look at the screen. You're still in circle one while you're doing that. And that's why so many people struggle and they don't get the results as quickly as they want because we don't realize that we're doing the right thing, but we're doing it in the wrong place. We're still in circle one while we're trying to improve and get better. And circle one is very limited. It has no resources, okay? It's very small. It has nothing to work with. It only has what you know up until now. That's it. Circle two now, on the other hand, is completely where your freedom is. All possibilities exist in circle two. None of the limiting factors in circle one exist in circle two. That's why it's so free. Obviously, circle two is where you want to be. Now, Albert Einstein, he came up with a great quote that's very relevant to this. He said that you can't solve a problem using the same mind that caused the problem in the first place. Well, guess what circle one is? Circle one is your old mind. You cannot solve a problem using your old mind. It's filled with too many limiting factors. There's some good stuff in there. I'm not saying that there isn't, but there is. But for most of us, don't we pay more attention to the negative things, the limiting things, the false beliefs that we carry around, the poor assumptions, the poor self-talk. We, we have our past examples. We just have so much garbage in there. And so when you learn new things, guess what? Those new things are going into the old garbage. I call it rancid milk, the rancid milk theory. So when you go to your refrigerator and if you have a quart of milk and you open it up and it smells, 
it's rancid. What do you do? Do you go to the store and buy another quart of milk and pour half of that milk into the old milk, hoping that it's going to smell better? No, but that's what we're doing here. Do you get it? Circle one is the rancid milk, and you're getting all this great information maybe from wherever you're getting it, but you're pouring that information into circle one, rancid milk. It stinks in there, okay? And that's why you're not getting the improvement that you want to get. So circle one, circle two, very, very important. Okay, so you have frustrations on the course, inconsistency, emotional ups and downs, right? You have reactive patterns that are just governing you and r running you all over the place, self-doubt. All of these things you're feeling on approach shots, on pitch shots, uh, taking your, your range game to the course, to the first tee, you're hitting it nice on the range, and all of a sudden you come to the first tee, and what happens? <laughs> Different guy, right? Different girl, right? What happened? There's no reason for that stuff to continue happening anymore. Inconsistency goes away. The emotional ups and downs in these reaction patterns, they start dissipating and going away. The self-doubt starts to disappear. Those are your on-course frustrations. What about your off-course frustrations? Over the years, so many people have exhibited their frustrations to me. They've read the books, they've gone to the workshops, they've looked at the videos on YouTube, they're hearing one platitude after another, one quick fix tip after another, and yet they're not getting what they want. It's astounding to me how many people continue to do that cycle. Well, guess what? It's that circle one habit again. Circle one is full of habits that unless you're aware and awake and you, you understand them, they're going to keep running the show. And that is why circle two is rarely uh, achievable for a lot of golfers. They rarely get into circle two because they're too busy hanging out in circle one where all the garbage is. So, and if you noticed on that, on that page, circle one and circle two don't meet. They don't touch each other. They're two completely different entities, okay? Circle two is where you wanna be. So you see this picture here of Jackie Chan. What is going on here? That's what so many golfers say to me when we first talk. What is going on here, Dave? Why is all the information I get so confusing? It's so vague, it's so theoretical, it's so repetitive. Well, Wired to Win doesn't do any of that stuff. So what do you do? Wired to Win Total Golf is the name of the program. No psychology, no theories, no vague concepts. It's all about in the moment change and being able to self-correct. There's a lot of empowerment when you know that you can self-correct at any moment in any position on the golf course. And that's what the laws allow you to do. So you have a choice now. You can keep doing what you're doing in circle one. I'm not gonna stop you. But now you understand that if you hang out in circle one, your, it has no resources for you. There's nothing new there uh, because it doesn't exist there. So if you want to keep hanging out in circle one and looking at a lot of videos and reading books and do whatever you do, just understand that you're pouring good stuff into rancid milk. And that's why you're not getting the results that you want to get. Or you can enjoy the freedom of circle two, circle two more easily by learning the laws that govern golf performance. Now here, I'm showing you this because it was it's probably the best written testimonial I've ever gotten. It's by Robert Fagan. He's a highly acclaimed travel and golf writer, an accomplished player and instructor. He's been doing this for a lot of years. He holds a PhD in counseling. He's a PGA section executive director and a golf executive. He has seen the program. He has gone through the program. Here's what he says. It's a long quote. There are only about a half dozen performance coaches, sports psychologists throughout the sports world that impress me, and most of them currently fly below the popular radar. Too many, and especially the more visible golf and sports psychologists, address the symptoms that impede accomplishment and not the sources while spewing forth the same often repeated platitudes. I hear this all the time from golfers. And over 20 years, I've been hearing the same thing. Now, address the symptoms that impede accomplishment, not the sources. The laws teach you the source of everything. And the rest of his quote goes on. This is not the case with David Breslow, an accomplished coaching veteran whose messages transcend golf and sports into business and life. You won't encounter the same old recycled tips, cycle babble, or vague theories, and there's no longer extended learning curve. The content is straightforward and to the point. His delivery is so spot on that it's almost embarrassingly simple. And that's my nickname in the business, by the way. It's Mr. Simple. 
because people say to me all the time, gosh, Dave, you make it sound so simple to go from point A to point B in my game. I say, well, you make it sound so hard. Who do you want to believe, you or me? Most people, when they get the chance to simplify, they jump at it. That's exactly what Wired to Win is. So what's your next step? I don't know where you're watching this video, YouTube, Facebook, some other place where it's being posted. So look for a link on this page for the latest offer for you to be part of the most effective golf performance approach available today. Wired to Win is the name of the program. So my name is David Breslow, and I want to thank you so much for joining me for this brief intro. It was my pleasure to be with you, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Please take care.